<laughs> we can Great. talk about everything. I don't know. <laughs> it could be anything. Friday. No, I no, thought sure you left the show that had all the complications of time travel and all that stuff. Apparently not. Now you have it too many. With you. you have too many movies going on and <laughs> too many projects overlapping each other. <laughs> a lot of timey wimey confusion, timey, as it used absolutely. to be called. Uh, we're here with Karen. Uh, it's Gillen, right? Yes, Gillen right, with a Gillen. hard G. Um, I got to tell you, I've been waiting for so many years to get a chance to talk to you. No way. I thought we were going to have you for your uh, for your old project Selfie at the oh, time. We had John Chow, but the the thing the schedule never worked out for you, but oh. this is amazing that now that we have the time to yes. sit down and talk. We finally get to do this. I am such a big fan. You are. And I'm sure you hear this a lot. It's weird now because you're part of another huge franchise that it kind of splits where people recognize you from because I, I yes. know you from Doctor Who right. and of course Guardians of the Galaxy right. but now you have a whole other generation of younger people coming up knowing you from Guardians of the Galaxy yeah which is really interesting and cool to be involved in two um, franchises but one of them I'm more recognizable in so you know in Doctor Who it's just my actual human thank you face um, so you know a lot of people recognize me from that rather than Guardians of the Galaxy in which I am bold and blue yeah but just as lovely. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and less robotic parts in Doctor Who yes. than you have in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, let's talk the movies first, and then I want to pick your brain on a couple of the other things that you've done. Okay. Uh, let's talk with Circles, which is out right now. Yep. Uh, an amazing cast to be a part of. So amazing, yeah. The, the current projects and the projects you have coming up, just reading it, it's like, this is a who's who of IMDb kind of I thing. I know, I'm just you looking have, around at everyone like, what am I doing here? How did you land there? It's like, you have Tom Hanks and Emma Watson yes. in cir- uh, The Circle. The Circle. Uh, I think Patton Oswalt's in that too, yep. right? This movie is about, it's sort of like Big Brother, but on a global scale. Yeah, um, it's about a company that's technology-based, and they believe in total transparency um, at all times. And I play a character called Annie, who's the spokesperson for The Circle. And she questions whether it's ethically right to make people document everything that they're doing. Um, And she suffers some consequences for posing that question. Right. Doesn't go so well for her. And based on the trailer that that I've seen, or the couple of trailers that I've seen, they're all about transparency, but Mm -hmm. in typical form, they're not completely transparent, it seems. Yes, the men at the top aren't necessarily exercising what they're preaching. Isn't that always the way? Always. What's it like working with Tom Hanks? Do you just stare at him the whole time? Yeah, I was just staring with my mouth open. I mean, it was just incredible. Um, He's such a great actor and a genuinely lovely person. And he, you know, was talking to everyone on set and just making it a really fun environment. And I was like, okay, that is elegance. I've heard for years he's one of the nicest people. He really is. I wish I had some story that was like, at least like a little different from that. But nope. He's the nicest. That's a great rep. Not a lot of reputation. Not a lot of people have that reputation in Hollywood, and it's great that no. it's been consistent for so long. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do if I'd work with him. I'd be staring at him like, you were in big. You know? Oh, I was <laughs> I thinking Forrest staring. Gump. Forrest That's where Gump. my mind went. Or, um, oh, what's the movie we were staring on the island? Oh, Castaway? Castaway. Oh, Wilson! Yeah. It's like, you have so many movies that I love. I know. He's a legend. It is. He really is. So that, that's a lot of fun to do that movie. And yeah. Isn't it a little weird to have two projects that come out almost side by side with each other. I mean, yeah. it's not even on the same day, but close enough. Really close. Giving a week space, because now we have Guardians of the Galaxy, yep. uh, Volume 2, mm-hmm. and you're in that as well. Yeah. Back-to-back shots of Karen Gillan here. I know, it's exciting. Right. How do you root for, like, what do you? which one do you know to root for? Oh, goodness, I don't know. Hopefully they're not competing against each other. Um, I don't know what I'm rooting for. I feel yeah. like I need to remain, you know. I think the safe bet is number one each weekend, and if it's one and two back to back, then you're fine with that. Yeah, I'm okay yeah. with that. Go, go with work. that. <laughs> and then you, you down the line, you've got another massive project where you're doing the uh, the next stage of Jumanji. Yes! With The Rock! With The Rock! And Jack Black. And Jack Black and Kevin Hart. So the four of us are, are running around the jungle in Hawaii in Jumanji, and it's so funny. <laughs> So in the, in this this is just a year of Karen Gillan. Oh, well, I don't know about that, but thanks. <laughs> Every day, Entertainment Weekly is going to be like, another photo with her, all right, this movie. <laughs> but that's such a great problem to have where you can go from being an actor where you, you're, you take all this time to perfect and hone your craft and you don't know if you're actually going to succeed the way you hope and then mm-hmm. maybe you'll land that commercial or maybe you'll land mm-hmm. a pilot and, and or maybe you'll actually get into a TV series yeah. and then, great, you have a TV series, but will I have anything after that? It's like you're never at a part where you can kind of relax and say, oh, right. I've done everything. What's my next thing? What's my next thing? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, but that's kind of the exciting part of the whole 
you know, career as well. I love just like aspiring to the next thing. Um, so it's been kind of riveting along the way. You have, uh, you, you've had all these great projects. Now the door's kind of open for you to do more things. I hope so. You've done some great genres so far. What would you like to do? Like, what's on your list? What's the passion project? Um, so actually, I just did a passion project, um, which was a film that I wrote and directed called The Party's Just Beginning. Um, and that's set in Scotland and it follows the story of a girl who is dealing with the suicide of her best friend. So that was such a passion project for me because I always wanted to move into directing and I finally got to do it and it was such a cool experience. And not have to hide the accent, you can go full on. I went full Scottish. It's just really Scottish. Yeah. That, that's a, that's fun with Doctor Who too where you have to, um, certain some of the actors, like people don't know David Tennant. You know, yeah, they think he's English. He's English, but he does the accent. Yeah, he's amazing And a lot of people who are Scottish that do Doctor Who or sh- shows like that have to do the English uh, cadence rather than yep. the Scottish, uh, uh, the Scottish uh, brogue. Yeah. And now you get to do projects where it's okay to let. It's like being a New, uh, a diehard New Yorker. Uh, grew up in the city. Mm-hmm. You have a very bad accent. No, I love that accent. To foreigners, I'm sure it's great. It's but amazing. If, to if you lived here all your life or anywhere in the country, they just find it annoying. Like coffee, the North, yeah, a cup coffee, of coffee. Talk, talking. Anything with an L is a W. Anything with a R is an A. And oh, it's the greatest. It, I feel like you should all embrace up. it. It's all messed up. <laughs> um, Guardians of the Galaxy two. I got a chance to see this. Oh, you saw it. I saw it. Amazing. Uh, we'll keep it spoiler free. But yes. you, your role really intensifies in this movie. Yes. You're not just a introduction character no. and have, with a little side plot. You're part of a uh, a huge B story in this movie. Yeah. Where uh, you know, where uh, Peter is dealing with his dad. There's a lot of of nebula time now dealing yeah. with her sister and that relationship and seeing sort of the transformation of from being uh, the way you were brought up from and being um, jealous of your sister you had the Jan Brady syndrome kind of thing oh, where yeah, completely. your sister was always better than you and your father always treated you bad because like you're not as good as her we have yep. to update you to make you as good as her and no matter what he does he couldn't make you her I could never match up to Gamora right. the golden girl and uh, then you get to see your actual personality come through rather than the programming that you've had as far as being a yes. badass, or as far as being uh, a villain, if you say, in this series. Yeah, we definitely chip away at the layers um, with Nebula, which is so exciting because when I first auditioned to play Nebula, the thing that was most interesting to me was that relationship between her and Gamora, you know? She's very vulnerable. She was overlooked. And if anything, I thought she was a victim in the situation rather than a villain. And in this movie, we really explore that and we dive right into it and we learn about the history. Um, (laughs) Someone just gave me a thumbs up. Um, You know, we learn about the history of their relationship um, and with each other and with their father. And um, it's pretty traumatic for them. And it's interesting, too, with... um, This isn't too much of a secret because you can find this stuff online, but... All of this stuff is now coming into uh, into one direction, going into the Infinity War. Yes, and uh, you reveal that in the movie that you'll be part of it, mm-hmm. uh, which was no surprise. But the way you're going into this now, sort of a not just a kinship, but um, I'll say a, a tag team kind of combo with your sister, mm-hmm. like this. Going into Infinity War, there's a lot of sibling stuff going on because yes. you got Thor and Loki, you have mm-hmm. you two, um, and then you have um, uh, oh, if they do let's go Scarlet Witch and and if they bring her brother back or not for Infinity yeah. War and all that. So there's a lot of siblings going into this whole thing. Yes, all the uh, the franchises coming together into one super mega movie. Oh, well, actually, mean, it's two super mega movies, part one two and part two. Huge cinematic events. So you're shooting that right now, right? Yes. So just when you thought you're done with uh, with all the makeup oh. and everything, you got to go right back into oh, it. Oh, I've been right back into it um, since January. They, I had a question because I was looking at some of the close-ups in the movie. Mm-hmm. Did they have all your hair under a cap kind of thing? Yes. Did you have to shave the sides? I did not, but I shaved the underneath, the under half. Okay. Because the way it was looking on the side, I'm like, all right, I think she still has all her hair under the cap thing, but the way the sides were on the, th- mm-hmm. I was like, I wonder if they did like the punk rock thing where they shaved oh. you right there just to keep it even with the uh, with the makeup and the prosthetic on it. Actually, they they left my the sides of my hair and then they just went for for the underneath to kind of take the bulk out because I have so much hair. How much how much is that itch? 
Like when you have that on and you're in full makeup and you know you can't do anything, but you still have all your, like I think it would be easier if you didn't have your hair because you wouldn't feel it. Yeah. But when you have all that hair matted up and you're doing all that stuff, does it itch? Do you want to just scratch You know, your it's head? not so itchy. And if you do have an itch, you're not allowed to scratch. You have to prod it with a piece of metal. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's not so much itchy. It's just kind of like they wet the hair down to get it under the cap. And so it's kind of wet all day. Yeah. So that's that's the sort of weird sensation. Um. The, the movie again Guardians of the Galaxy the original one out of all the Marvel films I think was the most beautifully shot because of mm. just the scenery the the way they do the planets the way they do outer space like that is just it's oh, yeah. constantly colorful it's a beautiful visual and it's movie. not overbearing like you no. know sometimes people have those filters on their phone where they adjust the saturation and, yes. the, and the uh and the brightness of it and it's like that color is too vivid it, it takes you out of looking at the photo because you know it's it's not really mm-hmm. how that is mm-hmm. but the way they shoot everything and the way the cgi is done mm-hmm. you just sit there and it's like, everything's like a painting yeah, um, the DP on uh, on Guardians Volume Two was incredible. He's like this veteran. Um, basically, he shot the uh, first ever uh, digital movie ever, um, transitioning from film, and he's just such a smart guy from England. Do you get a lot of uh, people coming up to you now more, recognizing you more from Guardians of the Galaxy than Doctor Who? Um, it's probably more Doctor Who still, just because still. obviously I look more like that character than Nebula. Um, but more and more people are coming up for Guardians, like uh, maybe more so after this film comes out because she has much more of a presence. Do in kids it. freak out when they realize that you're Nebula from the movie? Um, and, yeah, and it takes that, them a little is, second. What does that feel like when you see them light up about it? I mean, it's amazing. It's so cool to see people be enthusiastic about anything that you're doing, especially kids, because that's really exciting. And they're so honest with their reactions, you know. Um, but yeah, some of them are scared of me, I think. <laughs> oh, because of your character? Well, yeah, because Nebula is a little intimidating. Do you, uh, do you find it a bit overbearing? Because Doctor Who is a worldwide phenomenon, and you came in it right, at, right when it's... Um, it's still going strong but it was at its zenith you know at yeah. that point where it just came back after so many years being off yeah and you know the back-to-back combo of david Tennant and matt smith's runs mm-hmm. uh were, you know got it to the point where not only it was not just the pride and joy of the uk it became the world's property yeah and, and so many more women came to the franchise mm-hmm. to enjoy it and, and yeah. for the for the stories and the relationship with the companions mm-hmm. That has to be overbearing when you just try to go and live your life when you're not shooting that everybody recognizes Amy Pond. Um, it was it was a lot at first, actually, just because I had to adjust to this whole other lifestyle because I hadn't done anything before that, really. I mean, a few episodes of things in the UK, but like nothing, um, you know, consistent. Um, and then literally in the UK, I mean, it was just overnight. I mean, my life completely changed. Um yeah, it was a little overbearing at first, um, but I was also so excited and I was 21 and I was like, yes, let's do this. Um, so it was, I mean, it was just mostly exciting, but it was definitely an adjustment. I saw, um, we do our show from San Diego Comic-Con every year. Cool. And I saw, one of the things I like to, to check out is the back parts of the convention center. Uh, <laughs> all the lines of people camping out to go into Hall H yes. and that back part where all the black government looking you know, SUVs pull up and yeah. the celebrities come out. Oh, that and, loading dock. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that always fascinates me because I like watching that where I see the crowd trying to get to that area and when the Doctor Who stuff was going on it was just like a phenomenon. That place was packed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember going to Comic Con with Doctor Who and, and just feeling like a rock star for two days. Yeah, you it was can't amazing. Even, can't even go on the floor. Like Matt Smith had to wear uh, a Simpsons man. mask yep. to walk around, and then re- later he revealed as they were filming everything that it was you know the Doctor walk in the hall. Yeah, yeah. Did you have to do something similar like that? Yeah, definitely. Or did you have security around you when you were walking around the floor? I think we had both masks and security. Um, yeah, because there was just so many Doctor Who fans, which is amazing. And we wanted to interact with all of them. It's just that it was hard to maybe contain, you know, to keep it all under control if we were to go without the masks. With Doctor Who. The part where... All right, so you guys leave, and Matt Smith still has another season without you guys. You were there yeah. for that one portion, and then all of a sudden he has to go on with a new yeah. companion. Mm-hmm. And then you come back for his 
goodbye song, his yeah. regeneration like mm-hmm. that. Uh, was that under wraps? Like, was that like a hush hush thing that you were coming in for to shoot that last scene? Yeah, yeah, like definitely. Nobody knew about that, and no, I mean, just everyone that needed to know knew about it. And yeah, we wanted to keep it. A were bit you snuck surprised. in on set? Like, you know, that even the people working didn't know, so that it wouldn't get uh, leaked anywhere. Um, I don't think they quite went that far, but everybody that works on Doctor Who knows that they can't talk about it because people are always after spoilers and we want to keep surprising everyone yeah. is it weird to, to be on the stage with him again and knowing that the other companion is there you know i know I it's all wondering... actors and stuff and but that's just the story but uh is it weird because david Tennant had said it was weird because the only time he really ran into matt smith is when they were crossing paths he finished his scene mm-hmm. was in character and then there comes matt smith in his outfit yes walking and they said hello for like a minute and then he went to go shoot the rest of it and he moved on yeah one in one out yeah. literally um and then i witnessed it with matt smith and peter capaldi as well because i was there for that right um it was such a weird day actually I walked into the studio and Jenna Coleman had been shooting her section of the scene with Matt and I just found her in tears and she was like how do you do this <laughs> and I was like and I like I was like a true British person I was like do you want a cup of tea <laughs> like that solves everything um, and then I went on set and shot the scene with Matt and it was like he I felt like I had to be the strong one in the situation because Jenna was crying Matt was in a really weird zone um, you know because he yeah, was just really sad there's a lot really of emotion sad. oh my god um, I can't imagine the, the 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 emotional stress level going on there shooting the thing as compared to the people who have to sit there and watch it because that was a one of the things they do good is emotional scenes and yeah. emotional storylines mm-hmm. on, on that program and to see that big send off yeah uh, that I mean with everything crossing over and you're just like you can't not look at that and get a little choked up at oh it. yeah and so I was like trying to lighten the mood uh, singing another one bites the dust but no one was really laughing <laughs> um, and then uh, and then he shot the scene and then Matt left the studio and Stephen Moffat had come down to the monitor so I was hanging around with him catching up and then I just saw the door to the studio like swing open and it was dark inside and light outside and this big silhouette comes in the doorway and then I re- I was like it's him and Peter Capaldi walks in in Matt's outfit and I was like whoa and that's it that's it and now it's Peter Capaldi um, and it was just such a weird moment to witness and he's going to be done uh, as of this Soon, Christmas I know then he's going to and, and Moffat's leaving too so it's going to yeah. be a whole big slate uh, wiped and and going in a whole new uh, direction for I the doctor know. now because of your storyline and your timeline with everything he couldn't go back and revisit you and Rory uh, yeah be- because of paradoxes but that doesn't mean that you're always gone. You may not be with that doctor, but somewhere down the line, they could work out something where you cross paths with the doctor in a yeah. different form. If they asked you to do that, would you want to go back? Or are you taking like the Christopher Eccleston approach and like, I did that, I'm moving on to my next thing? Nope, I, I would go back in a second. <laughs> really? So if they I said Amy's going to, it just happens to stumble across the new doctor for for an episode or a Christmas uh, episode or something like that. That would be the that. greatest. You, so you would go back. 100%. That's yeah. awesome. I loved working on that television show and it was so good to me and did so much for my career that I would always go back. Was it your choice to leave or or did they say this is how the story's going and, and it's um, just going to end? It was kind of mutual. Um, I raised the question with Stephen um, and then we talked about it and we both felt like it was a good time for me to go. I kind of felt like I kind of felt like I'd taken the character as far as I could. I was like, I really, really don't want this to fizzle out because it's been so wonderful um, and I just want to go out with a bang. And I was like, can you just make sure that you give me that? And he was like, okay, I'm going to give you a great ending. I'm um, running out of time here. Jump back to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 real quick. There's so much I want to talk about, but it's anything I say at this point will be a spoiler because <laughs> yes. the movie's just out right now and mm-hmm. people need to just go and see it. I got to say, Kurt Russell did such an amazing job mm-hmm. of being a very hateable character because mm-hmm. he's got that smile and he's just like that guy you, everybody wants to hang out with yep. and you know he looks really cool. But he goes from being the really super cool guy to oh my God, I hate this guy. And that's such a, a, a tribute to the way that he acts that you go you know, from this way to this way and you're just like, yeah. yes, you believe everything he's doing. He's an incredible actor. Yeah. What could we say about this movie without spoiling anything that, you know, to get people on board who haven't seen the franchise yet? Like, what, what What's in this movie that people really should... Uh, be looking for that you really loved um i think that the soundtrack is even better yes i think it's <laughs> going to make you cry with laughter and emotion 
the last 20 minutes, oh. I got to tell you, I was a mess. Yes, I left so that was mo- I. I left that movie a mess. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll admit it. I, I really was ups- upset in a good way and a yeah. bad way with it. It was very emotional. Yes, and also, um, just as a mark of quality, my dad stayed awake during it, so there's that. All right. He usually sleeps uh, through my projects, but um, that he stayed should be awake. on the bottom of the movie. Piece. I think I've been Karen's pitching. dad stayed awake for the movie. Yes. <laughs> Who needs five stars when Karen's dad stayed awake? <laughs> yeah. That's that's the end all be all of seeing the movie. That's my rating system. Karen, we run out of time. There's so many other things I want to talk to you about. But please don't make it another three years before you come back. We'd love to talk to you again. I'll be back. Thank you so much. It's uh, Karen Gillen on Twitter, but Karen Gillen official on Instagram. Yep. See the movie, The Circle, see Guardians of the Galaxy 2, see both movies. Shoot her some love. Tell her what you thought of the movie. Love to see you again soon. Great. Thank Thank you you so much. Thank you so much. Cheers.